Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Cyber Trading University today presents our closing bell webinar with special guest today and good friend of ours here, Barry Burns. Now, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Josh Levitan. I am one of Fausto's uh, day trading instructors here with CTU. Uh, let me just get a quick sound check first so I know everybody can hear us loud and clear. All right, perfect. Great to see a lot of us here with us and a lot of our students here with us today as well. Uh, Eric H., great to see you. Jeffrey, Marvin, Don T., student with us as well as alongside David F., uh, Rich K., Josie, Perna, Jorge, Leda, Leslie, Ted. Perfect, great. Uh, great to see everybody, like I said, and welcome back. Today we have special guest Barry Burns with us. What Barry will be going over with everybody today is exactly the name of his title, How to Trade with Complete Confidence Day In and Day Out. Uh, the thing about it is the fact that the trading game is 90% mental, going into it with the right mentality, and that's exactly what Barry Burns will be going over with us today. Um, his method's simple, it's straightforward, no fancy indicators, something of which uh, us here at C2 is very fond of, the fact of, no, uh, the fact of no usage of indicators whatsoever, or any of these high-tech expense, uh, high expensive tools or any of that nature. Uh, so essentially what Larry's strategy goes over is applicable not just towards the day trading market like we do here with, um, with CTU, but alongside Forex, futures, options, swing trading, investing, every everything else to it. Uh, so Barry, are you there? Yes, I am here. <laughs> all right, can you hear me now? Loud and clear, Barry. I think the floor is all yours. All right, fantastic. Thanks, Greg. All right, well, I'm excited to be here. I am a big fan of Cyber Trading University and uh, so I only partner with people that I really believe in and know are giving good quality education and information. And so it's my privilege to be here. And looks like we got a good crowd and oh, people still coming in. So that's fantastic. All right. So let's, oh, Lita says the gain is a little too high. All right. Let me see if I can adjust things here just a smidge. Oh, it's about down as low as it can go. All right, hopefully it'll be okay. All right, so, oh, hi, Ron. Ron learned how to swing trade through my instruction. Well, that's great, fantastic, glad you're here. <laughs> All right, so let's jump right into it. Alrighty, let's see here, there we go. Oh, just a reminder to start the recording if you guys haven't already. And uh, already got a nice introduction there, but there's my ugly mug, and I am the author of Trend Trading for Dummies, part of the famous dummy series of books I've received. Reader's Choice Awards from Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities magazines for many, many years now. Really proud of that because that's voted on by, well, people just like you, real traders out there. I have also contributed to several other books in the trading arena, uh, Trend Trading for Dummies. That one is all mine, but I've also been asked to contribute to uh, the Complete Guide to Investing in Derivatives, which I did work with a lot of uh, trading companies out there. They bring me on board to help train their traders. Worked with Ninja Trader, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, eSignal, Metas, um, the Eurex Exchange, many other um, many other companies out there. Also do some things with candlesticks and uh, participated in that. A couple of house rules. Um, let's hold questions until the end. Actually, you can take questions in any time you want, but the uh, the presentation does take about an hour. I'll see if I can get done with it a little sooner so that we can have some time for questions at the end. But if I take questions during the presentation, um, I've done that in the past and I found that then we don't get done on time. And I do, really do respect your time. I know your time is precious and um, the fact that you've take time out of your busy day to be here with me for an hour. Well, I respect that and I want to make sure we get done on time so you guys can stay on your schedule. Please don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. That's very, very important. Only use discretionary money for trading because trading is very risky. All information in this presentation is for educational purposes only. Trading is extremely risky, as I said. This is in big, bold red letters, so you know it's important, and it really is. Um, the bottom line truth is, I'm not going to give you any hype here today. Most people don't make any money trading. I know that's not what you want to hear. That doesn't sell a lot of courses for me to tell you that. Um, actually, I got nothing for sale today anyway, so I'm not here to sell you any courses. There is absolutely nothing for sale at the end of this webinar. 
So just frees me up even more to be very transparent with you and let you know that, oh heck, let's make it worse because it is worse. Not only do most people not make money, most people lose money trading. Those are the real statistics documented by the SEC. So then, of course, we got to ask ourselves the question, well, if most people lose money, I want to be most people, I want to be the exception, how do I become one of the few who does make money consistently? And it all really starts, and it was already said, you know, with Greg saying psychology, and that's exactly right, 100% correct. It all begins with your mental attitude as you come into trading and as you do your trading. So many people come in having a get-rich-quick mindset thinking, oh, I'll learn this in, you know, a week or a month. I'll, I'll just go online and get all the free stuff, and I'll, I'll be self-taught. Mm, no, my friends, not that easy. Sorry. At Top Dog Trading, we don't allow get-rich-quick mindsets. And so I tell you just the opposite. Successful trading, if you want to become a consistently successful trader, you're going to have to treat it like what it is, which is a profession, the exact opposite of get-rich-quick. So when you think of a profession, you think of, well, going to college, going for four years, going to a good college, good university, getting great education, first of all, going to a good source. Number two, being a great student of that education, meaning skim through the materials and don't just sit there and figure, ah, I'll just slide through. No, study hard. And in real school, you've got midterms, you've got final exams, you've got papers to write, and you'll be graded. Well, as we go through our getting education, typically we don't have that, although in my courses I actually do have a feedback loop so that you'll know how you're doing. We have a quiz at the end of each um, video. But um, the ultimate test will be the market. The market will give you a grade, and that grade is going to be your P&L, your profit and loss. Now, there is a lot of money to be made in the market. There's some of us who make a lot of money. So wherever there's a lot of money to be made, it attracts the best and the brightest. So that's your competition. Therefore, you need to really take this seriously, dig in, give it the time it requires. And I always encourage people to start on a simulator or demo account and get used to things that way. Because if you can't be successful on a simulator or demo account, you're not going to be successful with real money. Now, it's definitely not the same because once you add the real money to it, there's a whole different psychological component that comes in. But at least you want to make sure that your trading methodology is working for you and that you understand that you're trading it correctly. Okay, go into that a little more than maybe some people do, but that's because that's probably the most important thing that I could tell you. Now, let's see how we do. And we're okay on time. So I'm going to be watching the clock here as we go along. Let me ask you a question. Let's have a little audience participation here. So I'm not just giving a monologue for an hour. And this is not a rhetorical question. I'm actually going to invite you to go ahead and type your answers into the chat box there. What are your most common trading problems, struggles, frustrations? And um, go ahead and type that in. The reason I ask that is I can actually customize the presentation for you a little bit here today. So what I mean by that is when I come across a topic that um, on my slides, you can see how yeah, we've got the slides here. But if I come across a topic where people say, yeah, that's not a problem, nobody's mentioned that as a problem, then I'll just probably go through that slide real fast, or heck, I might even just skip the slide altogether because nobody's got a challenge. On the other hand, if I come across a slide that um, talks about a topic that a lot of you are saying you have a problem with, well, then I'll slow down and we'll spend more time on that topic. So this is how I can customize the presentation to to you today, because every audience is a little different. Okay, so oh, we got a bunch of answers coming in here, basically. Okay. Um, so discipline, says Jeffrey. Yeah, discipline, very absolutely critical. Good one. Paul says entries. Yes, entries, also very important. Getting an exact right entry. Uh, oh, Jamie, I love it. Risk management. You know, very few people mention risk management. Good for you, because professional traders, we are all about risk management and money management more than indicators and there's or candlestick patterns or price patterns or any of that stuff. We focus on risk management and money management. Very rare answer given, so good for you. You get the uh, Top Dog Trading Invisible Cupid Dow Award today. Uh, <laughs> Ron says, waking up in the morning. I can relate to that because I'm in Los Angeles, so markets open here at 6.30 a.m. Ridiculous, right? Come on. New York, start later. <laughs> Phil, jumping into late. Okay, try to chase our entry. Stanley says um, exits. 
So we've got Paul with entries, and we've got Stanley with exits. When to get out, when to get in, when to get out. Well, that's pretty much what trading is, isn't it? That's great. Richard, fear in losing. Okay, another psychological challenge. Um, events, watch too many stocks at one time. So a little bit of information over. Um, let's see, exits. So several people mentioning exits. I'm not going to read all of these here necessarily. Yeah, Ron says New York needs to move to the West Coast. I agree. I agree. Ted, stock scanners. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I get that one a lot actually. Okay, so let me go through these, um, the common, most common answers that I've received. Because I actually do a survey that asks this and other questions of traders every year. And I ask literally tens of thousands of traders. So let me share with you the most common answers that have come in. Here's the top five answers. I feel like David Letterman here, the top ten list. Well, we're going to not spend that much time. We're going to do just a top five list. But here are the most common ones. See if you can relate to these. All right? Here's the first one. They say, well, I enter the market. Let's see. So you're going long. And then as soon as I get in, it seems like the market turns around and stops me out. Then after I get stopped out, the market turns back in the original direction of my trade. So when I went to Chicago, I actually, one of my mentors uh, was a floor trader at the CME. And this was way back in the days of yore when the pit there with him for a while. And he said, Barry, retailers are often right, but at the wrong time. And that's what he meant, the wrong time. Remember that. We're going to come back to that. So many people do not consider the element of time in their trading. Um, here's another one, getting out of big moves too soon, and so not making the huge profits. That really messes up your reward to risk ratio, doesn't it? You got to get the big rewards. Got to be there when they get a big move. Got to be there for the big move. Stay in. And several of you mentioned that already, so I know that you can relate to that one. Here's one, getting stopped out too often. Now that actually, in my opinion, well, that can have a couple of different um, causations. Number one could be your entry not being in a good entry, an accurate entry. Another one is just not placing your stops in the correct place. Um, here's number four, not knowing the best place to exit the market. Quite a few of you mentioned that. And the fifth and the one was trading a trend that doesn't follow through. And here are some of the comments on that one I actually remember very well. People would say, I let people um, type in their own words too. Not only multiple choice, but then type in any comments they had. And they would say things like, it's just amazing how I can watch a trend go up and up and up and up. And it keeps going up until I get in. And as soon as I get in, god darn it, that's exactly when the trend ends. It's just uncanny. And people, some people would even um, accuse their stockbrokers of watching their positions and trading against them or specialists or market makers or whoever and say, it is absolutely astonishing what a perfectly imperfect trader I am. I have this thing mastered for losing. Any of you feel that way? It's like as soon as you get in, that's exactly the time the market decides to go in the other direction. So it's like, it seems so crazy, like people are just watching you to get in. Well, guess what? Yes, so we've got some people saying yes here. Yep, Eric says yep. Um, Ron says the high divers technique. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so several of you can relate to that. Guess what? All these things are very common, and these problems. Oh, by the way, I can I remember number six. Number six was information overwhelm or overload. So somebody mentioned that too, watching too many stocks at one time. So this presentation today is to help you overcome these very problems. That's what this presentation is designed to do, is to show you that there are answers to these problems, and there are some of us who have solved them, and I want to share with you those solutions today. So, very practical webinar. Now, the ultimate way that you overcome these problems, as well as any others, is by putting together a methodology. You know, Greg said a really good thing. He said, well, trading is not about indicators and all this kind of stuff. And um, that is true. So, so many people, unfortunately, think that, oh, trading is about just finding the next magic indicator, finding the holy grail indicator, the holy grail price pattern, or whatever. Um, no, sorry, it's not. Real successful trading is about creating methodology a methodology. And a methodology means something that is very, well, methodical, 
um, rule-based, it's very objective, and it is putting together a number of variables, non-correlated variables, that when they all align, puts the odds on your side, gives you a probability scenario. So real trading is not about any one thing, it's about a number of variables that put together, put the odds on your side. And again, it has to be methodical and rule-based so that when you know, you get that feedback loop, am I doing this right, am I doing this wrong? If it's just um, subjective, it's just discretionary, then you really have no way for measuring or having repeated success or having consistency, as the title of the webinar indicates, into the future. Now, my methodology is about one thing and one thing only, to measure the energies in the market. Measuring what I call the energies in the market. By that, what I mean is, it's very uh, similar to what Fausto does, I'm measuring money flow. That's really all I'm concerned about, and I'm concerned about money flow right now, at this minute, because the market can do anything at any time. By the way, that is a great quote for you to put on a post-it note and put it onto your monitors and have in front of your eyes at all times. The market can do anything at any time. It can turn on a dime. News can come through, unexpected news, terrorist attack, economic news, political news that's unexpected. Heck, it doesn't even have to be real news. It could just be rumor or gossip. And, and the markets will change and go crazy. So very important to never get too confident. This is why we always emphasize risk management and money management. And just remember, don't get too confident in anything you're doing. Remember, it's only a probability scenario. And over a large sample of data, you will come out ahead as long as you do have an edge. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring the energy of money flow. The energy of money going into the market, the energy of money coming out of the market, the buying, the selling. I like to really look at the commitment of money. And I also like to look at what kind of money is coming in. Is it retail money or is it professional money? And for that, I like to look at a time in sales and see what the block, where the block trades are. And uh, that's, that's the most important thing to me uh, in looking at it to see if it's going to sustain. So there's five ways that I break down money flow. All right, five distinct ways, I individual energies, sub-energies, if you will, within the energy of money flow. And here they are, and this is all I really need to look at. So number one, first thing I look at when I'm looking at a chart, and I do trade charts, is the trend. Trend simply means up, down, sideways, direction. That's it. Okay, don't need to go into detail on that. Number two, though, is more important, and that is momentum. Momentum. Now, momentum is the strength of that trend. You know, a lot of professional trend traders, and when I say professionals, I mean people making money consistently, they actually have a worse than 50-50 reward to risk ratio, and yet they still make money. How can they do that? That's because they are very good at, again, money management, and so when they do get a nice sustained trend, they stay in for the big move, so even though their win-loss ratio might be slightly negative, their risk-reward ratio is fantastic. Now, for me personally, I mean, part of trading is getting to know yourself. And everyone can have a little different style that fits their personality, their psychology, and so forth. I know my brain cells, I need a better than 50-50 win-loss ratio. I just need that. Otherwise, it's hard for me to trade. My emotions start taking over. So, I do have a better than 50-50 win-loss ratio. So one thing that I do is I have, and by the way, this was the, even though it's number two on my list now, this was the last of the five energies I added because I always felt I was missing something. I would be looking at a chart and I'd see some losing trades and be like, dang, I just don't know why that trade didn't work out. I cannot figure it out. And I finally, finally, after about, oh, over a year, about a year and a half of real intense study and research, I found out what it was. I didn't know how to trade momentum. I had not incorporated the energy of momentum into my trading. And momentum tells you if that trend is strong or weak. Now, nobody had ever told me that every time before you take a trade, you should ask yourself this one question, and I'm going to share it with you right now. Um, and here it is. Has anyone taught you that before you take a trade, you should um, ask yourself, is this a strong trend or a weak trend? See, nobody told me that. 
Now, every time before you take a trade, I always ask myself that question, every single time. And if it's a weak trend, guess what? I don't trade it. Because a weak trend will not follow through. It's weak. <laughs> okay? So it's just kind of like if you're walking north. Um, you could, your trend is north, but you could turn around in a step, heck, half a step, and walk south. So trends can change at any time. Trends are also generally lagging indicators, just because it's telling you what the direction is up until this snapshot in time, but really has no forward-looking um, component to it. Now, momentum, on the other hand, is different. Instead of you walking north, it's like a locomotive, like a train going 60 miles an hour with 30 cars behind it, and it's going north. Now, that train has momentum. Momentum is the, the uh, properties of velocity and mass. That's the physical definition of momentum, right? And so if it's going 60 miles an hour and it has 30 cars behind it, it's got all that mass, and they apply the brakes, it's not going to stop on a dime. You can't just turn that car around in the length of one human step. Now, it's going to keep going north after the brakes are applied for another mile. And by the way, that's literally true because I saw it on the Discovery Channel, so I know that. <laughs> All right? So, so momentum has a leading component to it, unlike trend. So I put those two together and say, yeah, I take trend trades, but only if they have momentum behind them. Now, when we talk about momentum, we talk about velocity. That's the speed of the market. So we're looking for rate of change. And then mass, we equate to volume in the market. Now, volume, again, is broken down into the subset of retail volume and professional volume. And, of course, we want to trade with the professional volume because they're large orders. They're that big volume. This has the capacity to move the market forward, give us that next higher high. Okay? So very important when, you know, if we're analysts and we're just uh, studying historical charts, that's easy. But if you're a trader and you're trying to determine what's going to happen in the future, which is what we are, you got to have some sort of leading indication, and momentum is it. Okay, so I spent a little more time on that than I normally do just because um, several of you have talked about that, having that problem. Now, the third element is cycle timing. And I spent a little time on this one too, and we're going to bring up some charts and look at the details here. But right now, I'm just giving you the big overview of my methodology, so because it's real simple. My methodology is a checklist of five things. you got three out of five right now. And then we'll get into examples and we'll, we'll deep dive into it. So cycles is about timing your entries and timing your exits. So for example, let me do, oh, this is going to be a disaster. I'm going to bring up a little pen here. And let's see what we got. Okay, that's pretty good. We got blue. All right. So here's what it looks like. Here's what, it, um, here's what happens in practical trading. Okay, so people, sorry, my writing is bad. I'm doing this with a mouse, too. So we get higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. So people will buy this. They'll put their stop down here, right? And then the market goes up to fill them, comes back down, stops them out. And then after that, it goes to the moon. So what happened here? What happened is that a chart is a two-dimensional object. That's all. Two dimensions. Price on the y-axis. Time. Whoops. Time, let's put it over here, on the x-axis. So, and this is what my uh, floor trader friend was talking about. Retailers rough and right, but at the wrong time. So a lot of people do stuff with price. And that's great. You should. You have to. But not a lot of people are taught how to time your entries. Now, a chart is only a two-dimensional object. That's all. That's it. That's all you got. Time and price. The famous trader W.D. Gann actually said time is more important than price between the two of them. And I'm not sure if I agree with that or not, but I'll tell you, it's really, really important because here was the problem. This person got in at this time, and then they got stopped out. This person got in at this time on the axis, and they had a successful trade. So when to enter is critical. I mean, this really, if you look at it, all this is is, again, sorry for my horrible art. <laughs> That's just an ABC complex retrace, right? Now, sometimes we have simple retraces. Sometimes we have complex retraces. How do you know which it's going to be this time 
we got to have some kind of timing tool. Got to have some kind of timing tool. And so we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, let's get that off of there. So that those are the two big problems that I see people having. Two and three. So I slowed down, spent a little more time on those. Um, and this is where most of those problems that you mentioned and that were on the list of the survey, that's where they come from. People aren't taught about how to determine the strength of a trend and people aren't given any kind of timing tool to know when to get in. Now numbers four and five are much more common. So support resistance is energy number four. So cycles refers to the, the x-axis time. Now support resistance, that um, refers to the y-axis, your price axis. Very important, um, but a lot of people know about that already, so I won't go into detail about that. But yes, you do need that. And then the fifth and final energy is the energy of fractals. Now, that's just a fancy name for using multiple time frames. So if I'm trading, say I'm swing trading a daily chart, and I'm taking my setups on the daily chart, I'll also look at a weekly chart of the same market. Very common practice. And if I'm trading, I don't know, let's say you're trading a five-minute chart, if you're day trading, I'd also look at a 15-minute chart, and that 15-minute chart would be my fractal energy. So just using multiple time frames to get kind of a three-dimensional view of the market. It's the energy of scale, different scale. See what's going on on a higher time frame. Okay, so let's move on. Now, since our approach to trading is very methodical, objective, and rule-based, that means that now we have to have some way of measuring these energies with, the, with an objective instrument, an instrument. I don't trust myself to just eyeball a chart and say, well, the trend is up. I've actually done this in seminars where we've had, oh, four or 500 people in the room and I've got the big screens up and I just put a price chart up there and I ask people, okay, if you think this uh, market's going up, raise your hand. About half the room raises their hand. If you think it's going down, raise your hand. About half the room raises their hand. And if you have no clue, raise your hand. A few people <laughs> raise their hand. But that's what makes a market, is that some people think it's going up, some people think it's going down. So again, you can't just be subjective about this. You have to have some sort of instrument or rules, actually come first, because they allow us to create very objective rules. So they will give us a numerical value for what is the trend, what is momentum, what is the cycle, what support resistance, what's the fractal energy. We will have actual numbers for each one of those so that we don't have to guess. I don't want to guess. I want to know, I want the rules, and then we see if the rules work or not. But they have to be objectively measurable. Remember, these are energies, the energy of trend, the energy of cycle, the energy of momentum. So these instruments are like the gauges in the cockpit of a plane. You've got one gauge, it tells you how fast you're going. A good pilot, I've got a friend, his name's Don, and Don's got a little four-seater plane, and he'll fly me over to Catalina Island sometimes, we'll have a great time. It's always fun for me that he's been flying for decades, and you know, he always has this little sheet he pulls out, and he goes right down the sheet before he takes off. And I'm like, Don, you've been flying for decades. Do you still really need that little sheet? Literally check everything off? He says, yep. <laughs> he says, I still do it. Well, guess what? I still do it too. This is how I do it. I have these five energies, and that's my checklist for flying my trade. And I have instruments that measure each one of these five energies, just like he's got the speedometer, some how fast the plane's going, the altimeter tells him how high that plane is. Uh, I don't know the names of all the instruments in the plane, but he's got another one that tells him the tilt of the wing, the left wing to the right wing, another one that tells him the tilt of the nose to the tail of the plane. And, you know, those instruments are just spot on mathematically. And you could look out the window and you could get a general idea, but those instruments give him exact numbers that he can then... Now, does each instrument fly the plane? No. No way. But... The pilot takes the information from those instruments and flies the plane. Well, that's what we're going to do. No one of these instruments or indicators flies our trade. No one of them makes us money. They call them indicators because they indicate. If they make money, they call them money makers. Okay, but none of them are money makers. They just tell us the um, each the, the numerical value for each energy. That's that's all there is to it. 
Okay, then we take that information and make more. So for trends, I just use a moving average, simple, right? I don't use any proprietary indicators. Everything I use is very common. You just get what momentum indicator? Oh, that's genius. For cycles, I use an oscillator because that's what cycles are. They're oscillations. Support resistance, I use the common things, nothing fancy schmancy there, just previous cycle highs and lows, floor crater pivots, Fibonacci levels, things like that. And for the fractal energy, the higher time frame, I generally like to use a three to one ratio. So like I said, if I'm treating a one minute chart, I, I use a three minute chart for my um, fractal energy. A uh, 60 minute chart, I use, I use a 180 minute chart. Five minute chart, I use a 15 minute chart. Okay, that's a nice tight correlate. Now, how do we take that information? So far, all we've got is information. We've got pieces of evidence. It's like almost putting together a case, a uh, legal case. So we're putting together a case for this trade. Now, how do we take that information and make money? Well, all trading is about determining a probability scenario. Again, the market can do anything at any time. There's never any certainty. So play money management and risk management. But the odds are on our side over a large sample of data, we come out ahead. How do you do that though? The how-to is the tricky question. Well, here's how I do it. At each potential entry point, I ask myself one simple question. And that is this. How many of those five energies are aligned? Okay, that's it. So I give each setup a score of one to five. The higher the score, the higher I consider the probability of the trade. I liken this to taking each trade to court. I need five independent witnesses to establish a preponderance of the evidence. Now, at first it might look like, oh, Barry's just thrown five indicators on the chart and, um, you know, they're all aligned bullish or bearish, that's the way he trades. No, no. The key here is the word independent. So. These five energies were specifically chosen because each one is non-correlated to the other four. Let me say that one more time because this is really important. Each one non-correlated to the other four. You can have trend, price can be moving up, and momentum can be going south. In fact, it happens all the time. Not even unusual. Unusual. Okay. So, yes, Alice says, we can uh, give you some examples. We're going to get into examples right now. Okay, so uh, let's go through all five energies here, and we'll just take one at a time and show you some examples. So, energy number one, trend. For that, I use the 50-period simple moving average. It's the red line on the chart. See about it? Very common moving average. Now, some people say that a trend is defined by higher highs to lows. And, well, here we have a higher low, here we have a higher high. And so that is great, except that's not a trap. Oh, a lot of people are saying the uh, audio is getting real bad. Okay. Or has that been the way all the time? It sounds like that's...
Okay, testing one, two. I'm back. Hey, I think I can be heard. Uh, yeah, I'm back. Can you guys hear me now? Yay! Oh my gosh. Wow, 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 wow. Sorry about that. The whole room crashed on me. It said that the Shockwave Flash plugin became unresponsive and I got kicked out. It imploded. <laughs> but wow, look at that. Most of you are still here. That's great. The wonders of technology. I know, Lita. Wow. Okay. And I've also got a different microphone. How does this microphone sound now? Is this better? Is the audio quality better? Less static? Sounds great. Good, good. Okay. Yeah, this is a more professional microphone. Okay, good. All right. Well, golly, thank you guys for staying. I thought for sure everybody would be gone by now. <laughs> I actually tried several times to get in. Also, I used a different browser to get back in this time. So, okay. So let's pick up where we left off because I got good stuff for you and there's nothing for sale at the end of this webinar and I will um, yeah I'll go through things a little faster than normal so that we still get done close to on time and I got some free stuff I want to give you at the end I'm going to give you a free mini course and um, my cycle indicator and um, this bunch of free stuff okay so but I will speed it up a little bit so that we don't get too far off time all right thank you by the way all, all of you for still being here wow I'm impressed Okay, so, uh, yes, as you can see here, let me get my little, um, well, that's not it. Where is my, there we go. Yes, I want to get my little laser beam so I can add stuff. Okay, so we finished talking about um, trend. Trend is not really a higher low and a higher high because the dictionary defines trend as the extended general direction of whatever. <laughs> okay, the Webster's Dictionary definition. So in the markets, the market trend would be the extended general direction of the market. That means a long-term move, right? So a short-term move like this is not a trend. The 50MA, the red line, shows the long-term direction of the market. So this is just a little complex retrace up against the overall downtrend. And by the way, in the free mini course I'm going to give you today, um, I also give you in there one of my trade setups called the rubber band trade, and it looks just like this. Looks just like this. It's um, price above a downward angling 50 MA. And as you can see, nice winners, nice winners. It also goes into how professionals trade differently than amateurs. And here's an example. Some, some amateurs would see this as a reverse head and shoulders, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And that is not a reverse head and shoulders. Reverse head and shoulders has more to it than just a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. So in that course, the mini course you get for free, I'll explain that um, for the reverse head and shoulders, double tops, all kinds of patterns for you, okay? Um, again, the devil's in the details, and I'm um, going to be giving you the details in that course. Okay, so let's move on to momentum. So got higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, 50 MA is up. So if we were to look at taking a trade right here, this snapshot in time, then is the trend up? Well, yes, it is at that snapshot in time, but remember, trend can change it in a moment's notice. So obviously this trade doesn't work out very well, <laughs> but this one worked out fine. We made a higher high. This one, we don't make a higher high. Big question, how would you know this would be a high probability trade and this would not be a high probability trade? Again, trend does not tell you that. So you have to go to momentum. So let's take our little black curtain off here. So this is what I use for momentum, higher high, higher low, momentum, higher high, higher low. Great. So that's a strong trend. Remember, before we trade, we ask ourselves, is it a strong trend or a weak trend? That's a strong trend. So therefore, yes, I would take that. Next one, higher high. Now, momentum, ooh, not a higher high in momentum. That means momentum is shifting. So then we come to look at the place where we take our trade. Momentum has gone down to zero. See, that's the zero line right there. Well, that says, oh, stay out of the trend. See, again, this is one of the differences between amateur and professional traders looking for the details, the devil's in the details, and not just trading trend by itself. Asking yourself, is that a strong trend or a weak trend? Weak trend, therefore I would not take that. Now, some aggressive traders might actually short this. Um, I wouldn't because we are still trading against the, the trend and momentum 
is not strong or weak. It's just, well, it's weak, but it's not strong to the downside. I'd wait till here. I like that. Now we've crossed below the 50 MA. We've got a nice candlestick pattern and momentum is actually below zero. So it is a bearish momentum in a down, new downtrend. All right, let's go to energy number three. Energy number three is cycles. So cycles are the oscillations in the market. Okay, bare bones version of the cycle indicator I'll give you guys. Um, it's a little more sophisticated than this. This is just to kind of point out the oscillations. But again, cycles, yeah, they'll know, you know your highs and your lows, but it's really more about time. So for example, here, that's a cycle low. Well, guess what? That's a cycle high. I wouldn't want to buy that cycle low because there's no reward in it. So cycles don't give you the range of the market after you get in. What they just do is tell you timing. Now, you've got to coordinate timing with trend, with price levels, with momentum, with the higher time frame. See, no one of these things can be traded to make money. Uh, the variable of one, the number one, does not give you enough variables to create a probability scenario. So it's measuring time, but it's not measuring direction, and it's not measuring um, strength. So we can't use it alone, but as part of our method, it's very, very powerful. Okay, go to energy number four, support resistance. In this example, we use Fibonacci levels. Here's our impulse move from that high to that low. All right, trend is down, 50MA is down. Now again, support resistance levels, sometimes they hold, sometimes they don't. Sometimes the market bounces off of them. Other times, the market, <laughs> the market just slices through them. So here's your 23.6 Fibonacci, and the market just slices through it. What makes us um, pretty sure that's going to happen? Because the cycle is still up. See, the time for the market to put in a high has not occurred yet. So you've got to match the confluence of time and price. Well, just for time's sake, we'll look at the second arrow today. So here we have a cycle high indicated on our cycle indicator, and price comes in at that level as well. And that's that uh, wave high and the 50% retrace. So it's actually a cluster. Now look at momentum. First of all, well, yeah, let's look at momentum. When price went down, momentum pulled far below the zero line below the zero line. Then we get a little momentum shift here, don't we? A little higher low in momentum. So therefore, we're not going to go short again right away. We're going to wait. But when the market goes up, it's not very strong. It's very weak going up. So that's important because if markets are going to slice through resistance, they, they will only do it on strength. So how do we determine this is the level that will hold? We put it all together. Put all the pieces of evidence together. Preponderance of the evidence, remember? So we've got strong resistance. It's actually a cluster. Got a nice candlestick pattern for a high. Trend, what is trend? Trend is down. See, it's above the downward angling 50 MA. And that's our rubber band trade again that you'll get. And then it's time to go down and it's weak going up, therefore, and then you get your better reward going down. So having the good reward to risk ratio is absolutely critical. And that comes by putting all five of these elements together. All right, let's go to energy number five. So energy number five is the fractal energy, meaning using a higher time frame. So here we got real short time frames, 100 tick chart on the left, 300 tick chart on the right. By the way, this works for stocks, forks, futures, commodities, options, whatever. So I've shown different examples of different markets here because I use the same five energy method on everything. So if you look at our setup chart over here, price is kind of just meandering above the 50 MA, then it meanders below the 50 MA. The 50 MA is my um, line in the sand between a bull and bear market. All right, so now we're looking to the bearish side if we're going to take a trade. It can also provide support resistance. We get a nice candlestick pattern for a high, cycle high, Momentum is below zero. Everything's bearish there. Now I got to look over at the longer time frame. Now here, trend is down. I don't actually care that much about trend being down on the higher time frame. What I do care about is momentum. And the reason I don't care about trend on the higher time frame is because that is a lagging indicator. And this is already a three times slower chart. So using a lagging indicator on a three times slower chart doesn't give us a very good um, synchronicity between the timing of the two charts. So I use momentum. Momentum is a faster indicator and helps to tighten up 
the, the three-time leg over here. So it's angling down, and therefore I could take that trade. Okay, let's put it all together here. So going fast through these last slides here to make up time. So uh, here's how I trade. This is exactly what I do. My trading is uh, literally a checklist of five things. One, two, three, four, five, that's it. Very simple, no information overload, um, but I have enough non-correlated variables that when they all align, it does put the odds on my side and I do make money. So price has been going down, 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 down. Here's our 50 MA, crosses above the 50 MA for the first time and we get a nice little retrace. So here's my five step checklist. And I always look at them in this order, primarily just to keep my mind orderly so that I'm always clear. You have to have clarity when you're trading. Clarity, simplicity and clarity give you confidence. Um, as long as you're making money, obviously, but this works. I do this every day. So um, we're starting a new trend. I define a new trend as breaking above the 50 MA and holding above it. Um, that's very important. I trade with the trend, but only early in a new trend. And I defined early as the first two cycle lows in an uptrend or the first two cycle highs in a downtrend. Because the trend is your friend until what? The end. Right. Hmm. So that's it. The trend is your friend till the end. So we don't want to trade the trend in the end. We want to trade it at the beginning. So that's a first cycle low in a new uptrend. Okay, so we're good. Number two, momentum. Is this a strong trend or a weak trend? Well, we look down here. You guys tell me, does that look like a strong trend or a weak trend based on what I've shown you? And I know we haven't gone into a lot, but um, just looking at that, does that look like a strong trend or a weak trend? Go ahead and type that into the chat box and uh, let's see if I've made this clear. So I'm giving myself a test now. Have I taught you well? Okay, so everybody is saying strong, 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 strong. Good, yay, you got it. See, this is not rocket surgery, <laughs> as Paris Hilton would say. <laughs> so yes, it's a strong trend. It stays up well above the zero line, right? Okay, so we got a trend, it's strong. That's two out of five, still not enough to take a trade. So we go to number three. When is the right time to enter this? So our cycle indicator puts in a low, and I'll show you how to get access to this indicator, by the way. And um, so it's time to go along. Now, see, let's compare that with over here. This might look like a cycle low over here, right? But it's not, because look at your cycle indicator. It's still going down. Can't trust just the price bars. This is still going down. That's not a cycle low, even though it might look like it, just from price action. Okay, this is a cycle low. We're not gonna get a complex retrace here. Okay, so we got a score of three out of five. We go to number four. Gotta be buying off some sort of support. Confluence of time and price. Well, the red line there, that's your 50% retrace. So we do have support there, great. It's bouncing off of it, great. But we still can't take a trade unless we get number five. I have to have number five. And number five is the longer time frame, the higher time frame. So I don't know what, let's see, does it say? It doesn't even say what chart or what time interval this is. Let's say it's a five minute chart on the left and that'd be a 15 minute chart on the right. Doesn't matter. Three to one ratio, that's what matters. So now here, look, 50 MA is angling down. Trend is angling down, but we want to go along. Okay, I don't care about trend. I only care about momentum on the higher time frame because that is a faster indicator and it creates a tighter uh, signal between the two charts. So that's a five out of five trade. That's all I do. It's really that simple. And simplicity, let me tell you, it's beautiful to have a method that is that simple. Okay, so let's summarize. Hey, we're actually doing that pretty good on time, made up a lot of time here. All I do is wait for the alignment of the five energies to put the odds on your side. Here's my trading method in a whole sentence. Yes, it takes a whole sentence to explain my trading method. <laughs> I'm looking for a trend direction that is strong momentum. At the right time, using the cycle indicator, with support at your back, support resistance, confirmed by the bigger scale. Okay, and that's it. Um, it's very robust and adaptable. I use the same five energy method, trading stocks, commodities, options, currencies, futures, and I, yes, I do trade all five of those markets. I started out as a stock trader because my dad was a stock trader, but um, I also use this for investing. I manage a pension plan, swing trading, 
am in some swing trades right now and day trading, which I do pretty much every day, three, four, five days a week. And I just use the same five energy method because basically these instruments just tell you what you do is you, you take the chart, a blank chart, and that's like your cockpit of the plane. You just put your instruments on there and they'll tell you the, the energies of that market on that time frame. It's kind of like I could take the speedometer out of my car, put it in your car, and it'll tell the speed of your car. You don't need a different um, speedometer. Okay, so um, here's the stuff I promised you. First of all, here's my email address since we've gone three minutes over. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, I'll see if I can answer a question or two here, but um, feel free to email me anytime you want with my uh, email address, Barry at topdogtrading.com. And let me type this in to the uh, chat room. So there it is. I'll be happy to answer your questions. I uh, love talking with traders. So here's what I promised, my free five-day video correspondence course. This course, the topic is how professionals trade different than amateurs. So remember I showed you that reverse head and shoulders that I said is not a reverse head and shoulders? This actually goes into that example, that very example, and others of how amateurs would see something and professionals see that exact same thing very differently. There's five videos. Each video is about 15, 20 minutes long. At the end of each one, there's an interactive quiz. I, I'm a big believer in getting feedback loops so that you learn it. And then as I mentioned, you get one of my favorite trade setups. So you're not just gonna get theory in this course. I'm actually gonna give you one of the trade setups I take pretty much every day, sometimes two, three times a day. I took this trade today even, it made good money. So this occurs um, pretty much every day. And I'll give you the rules for it, the setup, all that. Absolutely free, it, make money with it. Um, yeah, I do recommend that you simulate or demo test it first before you trade it with real money, but it is definitely a winner. And then my cycle indicator that I mentioned, what we do with that, we just take a, a standard indicator that's on every chart out there and we modify it and then look for certain patterns on that indicator, just like price bars have patterns. Well, indicators have patterns too, and you got to trade those patterns in order for it to work. So I do that on a second webinar. Um, because I got to give you the whole tutorial on how to trade that. But no charge, absolutely free. And um, you can incorporate it in whatever method you're already using. So you can get all of it by just going to the bit.ly shortened link you see there. And I will type that into the chat box as well. And um, yeah, there it is. That might be a clickable link, I'm not sure. But if it's not, just uh, copy and paste it or type it in, bitly.com forward slash CTU trading and get it all, my gift to you. Okay, so let's see what, how we doing here. Yeah, we ran late. Let's see if I can answer one or two questions. I always hate to leave if I don't to ask a question. Um, Rick says, the problem is after figuring all that out, the market is closed. Oh, no, Rick, not at all. No, no, you do this in real time, obviously. Yeah, trading occurs bar by bar. So, in fact, you know, I listed it out step by, that's a great question though. Thank you for asking that, Rich. I, I go down through step one, two, three, four, five. It's not much information, but here's what actually happens. Once you start practicing this for a little while, um, you don't even have to count to five anymore, like counting to five is a burden, right? But no, after a while, the patterns just get ingrained, or ingrained into your brain cells, and I don't really count to five anymore. I just look at a chart and I can instantly recognize that you develop a pattern recognition because the pattern is so simple. Um, and obviously, you do have to do it on the heart right edge of the screen, so you know it's there. But not every trade is a winner, but more than not, they are at least for me. And um, you know, it's like anything else in trading. You know, you've got to trade on the hard right edge of the screen. There's always risk involved. But uh, I'll tell you, and especially the way I trade cycle highs and lows that I'll teach in the other webinar, boy, it's super accurate. It's incredibly accurate. I nail cycle highs and lows. That's probably one of my specialties, that and momentum. Alice is asking, a couple of people are asking about the momentum. Um, it goes a little deeper. Obviously, this is an overview. I had to go really fast through this. This is just a basic overview. Um, there's many ways you can measure momentum. Um, you, know, you can use the momentum indicator if you want to. 
Um, I just posted a YouTube video on the um, MFI indicator and uh, the market flow index. You can use that if you want to. There's many different ways. I have my own unique way of doing it that is um, more sophisticated than all of that that I teach in my uh, course if you want to get really into it and that's one of my specialties but it's way too much that I can go into right now. All right, and let's see. Why support resistance? Uh, not quite sure the um, context of that question, why support resistance? Well, those are price levels that, and by the way, support resistance, you want to, you, you don't want to use anything fancy. Here's the interesting thing. You want to use some things that everybody uses. Everyone thinks, no, I just want, you know, the secret stuff. Well, with support resistance, you actually want to use the same things that everybody else is using. And the reason for that is because they have a self-fulfilling prophecy. With the masses and masses of people out there, they're looking at those levels. Therefore, they will respond to those levels. They will buy off of them, sell off of them, take profits into them. So those are the things you want to see that everybody sees. So there's certain things, and support resistance is one of those, where you don't need any, you know, hidden support resistance. Now, there's other things, though, you do want to see that other people don't see, because that's where your edge is. So it's always a combination of having the um, information others have because of the self-fulfilling prophecy of it, but then having your own little secret stash over here, that's an edge. And, for example, my cycle indicator is one type of edge. So with that, we're able to keep our stops really, really tight, super tight, incredibly tight, because it's so darn accurate, accurate at nailing the final cycle low or the final cycle high, so you don't get stopped out so often. And that's one of the huge edges. All righty. Let's see here. Variables. Yeah, well, the variables are the five energies, Dennis. So they're the energy, the five variables of the um, money flow. So when money's flowing, is it flowing in on the buy side or the sell side? How strong is that buying? How strong is that selling? Is that retail buying or is it uh, um, professional buying? Um, the, the cycles, the oscillations in the market, that's another variable. Support resistance is available, another variable. The same market on a different scale. You know, like people will ask me, well, what's the trend of, I don't know, crude? And I say, uh, well, it depends. Right? Answer everybody hates, it depends. It depends on the chart interval you're looking at. Trend, any one of these energies is dependent on a scale. So there is no trend of Apple. There is no trend of Microsoft. Microsoft might have, a, it'll have maybe an uptrend on a five minute chart and a downtrend on a 60 minute chart. So what's the trend? Well, there is no the trend so relative to the time interval. So these are the variables, five non-correlated variables that we're talking about that give us a probability scenario when all five are bullish or all five are, um, are bearish. Okay. So what trading platform or what trading platform do I use? Wowee. Uh, yes, it's in, yeah, you can incorporate any, uh, all my indicators into any trading platform. Absolutely. I don't use any proprietary stuff at all. In fact, my cycle indicator, it's not an indicator that you download even. We're taking an indicator that's already on your charts, very, very common indicator, and we're modifying it on your charts. We're going to change the inputs and the parameters and then show you how to trade it with patterns to trade on it. So, yeah, it's got all, yeah, that's right, Ron. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> So um, I use a bunch of charting platforms. I've got Metastock, I've got NinjaTrader, I've got TradeStation, I've got Thinkorswim, I've got Schwab, um, Interactive Brokers. I think that's it. <laughs> but see, I use different ones for different things. So <laughs> yeah, so I'm, you know, I got seven monitors and, uh, you know, this is my life. So I, I uh, have quite an investment here. <laughs> Okay, last question, Dennis. Uh, why do you say cycles are good for timing? I'm trying to understand. Um, wow, how do I explain that? I would say get on the webinar because cycles are about um, 
oscillations in the market. So well, let me do one quick little thing here. I hate, uh, I wish I had more time for answers here. So markets kind of oscillate, they wiggle up and wiggle down like this, right? So those are the oscillations. These are the cycles I'm talking about. That would be a cycle high, that would be a cycle low. That would be a cycle high, cycle low. Now, it could also go like this, like this, and then it could go, I'm trying to get around my rating there. <laughs> so you got a cycle high, you got a cycle low, you got a cycle high, you got a cycle low. So what we wanna do is we wanna buy cycle lows and short cycle highs. But we're not gonna buy every cycle high, we're not gonna buy, or we're not gonna short every cycle low because even though we catch every one and we can identify every single one of them, um, that's not enough to trade with. You wanna trade only the ones that are going to give you a big reward while only risking a little bit of money. And so that's where the other energies come in. But we want to avoid, for example, I wanna avoid buying the cycle low because I would have been stopped out. So you gotta know which one of these is the right one. And I go into all of that in the webinar, way too much to go. It takes an hour to go into all that stuff. So hopefully that just gives you a little bit of an idea. I just don't want to ignore your question. But on the other hand, some questions are, um, you know, <laughs> a little beyond the scope of answering in a minute or two. All right, everyone. Well, golly, I want to really, really especially thank you guys today because I had that technical problem there and the vast, like 95% of you stayed. And I'm just shocked by that. I'm amazed. So thank you so much for that courtesy. I really appreciate it. I hope you got value out of this uh, presentation. Feel free to take advantage of all the free stuff I'm giving you here. I'm sure you really enjoy it. It's, um, I get a lot of great compliments uh, from my free course here and from the cycle indicator. And if you never buy anything from me, that's okay. It's not, that's cool. I'm not a hardcore salesman. Um, I just educate people into my courses. And you know what? The stuff that I give you, if you already have a great method that you enjoy, Great, just take what I've got, and if you like it, incorporate it into what you're already doing. I'm not perfectly fine with that. I just want to give value, and I figure if I give value, then we're all going to be happy. So that's my philosophy of life, is just to go out there and do good things and let the chips fall where they may. So you guys have been wonderful. Um, great questions, by the way. Sorry I wasn't able to get to all of them, but uh, feel free to email me anytime. You're never going to bother me. I love corresponding with traders. So it's, it's my fun, it's my pleasure to do it. Um, I had a trading club here and it's gone, so now I don't get to socialize with traders anymore, uh, except through these webinars and through my email and things like that, so. Okay guys, well thanks a lot, and oh, thank you so much to Cyber Trading University, by the way, for hosting this webinar. Really love you guys, you guys are the best. So thank you for hosting this, I really appreciate all of you. All right everyone, have a great rest of the day and happy trades.